Hello, and welcome to my ridiculous water cooling setup. I have a car radiator cooling it. This is about as overkill as I can get, and here's a little tour and see what you can get from it. So, looking at the setup. So, here's a giant car radiator. I pulled it from a junkyard for 10 bucks from just a huge pile. I actually don't know what it's from. It's an aluminum radiator, not a great one. Following the flow of water, it goes into an apple juice container because that's what I had laying around. Hot glued in the holes I cut which goes into a older RV pump. It's a 12 volt pump. It's not a great pump because it's not continuous duty, so it only lasts an hour and gets extremely hot. Though, um, because it's a diaphragm pump, it has very high pressure compared to a lot of centrifugal pumps, which gets routed into an Acetec water block because they had one laying around from a dead AIO that sprung a leak somewhere else in it and goes back into the radiator. And the first question everyone seems to ask is what type of temps do you get from this? And the answer is extremely good. Pretty much the water never gets warm because there's so much air dissipation through there that it can't easily get warm. So you can dump as much power into this as you want and it just keeps going. So for this comparison, I have an AMD FX 8 core, currently an 8300. I also have an 8350. I got it to 5.05 gigahertz on here at 1.55 volts, which is as high as I could get. I ran the bus speed at um, 220 megahertz, and then I went through AMD overdrive and software, and I cranked it all the way up to, um, I think, 22 and a half for the multiplier. Um, I got a score of 776 in centimage, which is quite good um, for an AMD FX chip. People have gotten, I think, over a thousand for LN2. I could try doing more voltage, but I don't really want to kill this chip right now. But I do have some Core 2 quads and Core 2 duos I don't mind just dumping power into. So let's try that now and see how the whole setup works. We'll take a look at setting up it for a new system. So this is a um, EVGA um, 780i board. So I just had this board laying around. It's a pretty nice board. You always want a reasonably good board for doing this because better boards have better VRM which lets you overclock it farther. Doing this on a low-end board is a great way to kill your low-end board. I think I have a Q9450 in here, which I don't care too much for either of this board. I have 4 gigs of RAM. Um, normally follow it. Normally though, if you're trying to do overclocking, have two DIMMs. Because the extra DIMMs don't let you go as far in memory. And getting the extra couple of megahertz on your memory lets you go a bit farther. A uh, few more things. Have an always, just have an always, just little fan sitting on here because there's no other airflow, and these VRMs and chipsets get nice and toasty. An IR thermometer to monitor temperatures is always a reasonable idea because of that. So useful. And the first thing we're going to do is just do a cold boot right now. We're just going to turn it on the pump. Make sure never run this without the pump. Turn it on. Make sure the temps are at least reasonable. And we'll go into the BIOS now and make sure the temps are okay in the BIOS. So here we are in the BIOS. First thing to look at is CPU temperature, which it says is fluctuating between 27 and 28C. Every other temperature just feels fine in here. So that means it's okay to boot into the OS. So we're going to just not do it. Now this board's running basically full defaults. I think, yeah, the time's right. Everything is kind of my basic setups. Advanced BIOS features, it's under I think advanced chipset features, this is all stock right here. Um, because this is not an unlocked chip, unfortunately we can only unlock it, overclock it with the multiplier. I would love to have a core to extreme, but I don't have one. So we're just going to see how high we can cram that FSB up. Okay, so now we're booting in the Windows 10, you can use whatever OS you want, but Windows 10 generally works well for this. Um, put it on an SSD because you don't hate your gut and want to wait for hard drives all the time. Uh, keeping things like Steam from running is normally a good idea, but eh, who cares. Looking in here under CPU, it recognizes all the cores, it's under heavy load because it's setting some stuff up. And crashing. So, that's fun. Um, and one thing that you should probably do once you get... Hardware Info is just a good program to go and view um, things like system temperatures and other load info about it. You should open a second, just list all the sensor data. I'm going to use Cinebench here for doing the benchmarking numbers. There's a lot of different programs. Generally, if you can pass a single Cinebench one, it is somewhat stable. Not fully stable though, but that's a kind of an okay stability mark for me. I, that's kind of my mark. Prime 95 normally hits it a bit harder because AVX 
that this one doesn't have it, and just running different instructions. My goal is just to get a Prime 95 number, so I don't really care. Um, so here, hardware info is now fully loaded. We see it's running at 2.6, which I think is a 8x multiplier on a, I think, 333 FSB. Yeah, 333 FSB. Um, and we see looking at um, vCore 1.192. Looking online, people suggest about 1.37 max. With this, and because I don't really care, I might go 1.4, 1.45. Um, temperatures on the CPU. So, 33 degrees, about 30, which is about what I'd expect it. So, we're going to go run a sentiment run, and we're going to monitor temperatures and make sure they don't shoot up too high, and just get this as a starting baseline number for performance. And here's our baseline measurement, getting 278, and then we're going to shut down and go into the BIOS and mess with some overclocking settings. And I got about the highest overclock result I'm probably going to end up with now, which is 3.73 gigahertz. It's stable at about 1.375 uh, 1 volts, which really isn't that spectacular. I mean, that's a pretty good OC from what I see online, but the temperatures definitely are helping that. It's just nothing spectacular, and I think the big problem is this is a locked chip, which I mean is quite impressive compared to today's locked chips, where 3% is nice on today's locked chips. But... Still, I'm going from about 280 to Cinebench on to about 385, which is not a bad overclock at all, but still, you know, I would have liked them all and felt like this should have given me more and more, and a culture extreme would do that. But other than that, it's a fun little project. I'd love to push this on. I do have, like, I might get a 3770K and do another video later on to see how hard I can push that on, like, Asus Rampage board. But... Oh, it crashed. I need to raise the voltage. I got it stable at 1.4. But, I'm not going to do that now. That's about it. Um, I got 385 instead of the other low result, stock result of um, 284. Fairly, uh, Core 2 Quad wasn't a great overclocker. It's it's an easy overclocker. Uh, it really does it. Um, temperatures got to about 55 degrees Celsius, which is kind of warm. I guess for this amount of water cooling, but it's probably just a bad contact from my clamp. And not much else to say. This was a fun little thing to do. Memory. This thing overclocked to the nines. I think this is like 550 rated at 555 or something, and I got it to 850. And this is like ECC server memory I had from some old system I got a long time ago. So kind of surprised that overclocked as well as it did. But I, other than that, nothing super spectacular. Like, the VRMs, they're quite toasty, even with a fan sitting here blowing air on it. Uh, not much else. The 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, th this would be a pretty competent, you can overclock it to, you know, um, like, I think you can easily push these to 3.4, 3.5 on air easily, which is a fun little thing to do. I'm guessing it's also getting pretty power hungry from the temperatures, probably pulling on uh, almost 200 watts, maybe a bit more. Um, yeah, fun little project. Do I suggest you set up a radiator like this? No, there's always leaking, it seems like. Always something's leaking. It was pretty good for a while, and then it decided to start leaking again. Um, and I probably need to put a cracked, um, I need to put a better reservoir on it. There was a seal that just isn't very good on this radiator. I don't know what it's for. I think it's like the fill cap, which I don't actually have the cap for, so it's just slowly leaking out of all the time, which is annoying. And, you know, just other quirks. I, I have a smaller radiator that's a car's um, the heater core for a car, which I'm going to try using as kind of a maybe I'll make this practical type of thing, but, you know, more just for fun. Um, it, even a heater core, which is quite beefy compared to almost any cooler used um, in a computer, should still do very well with temperatures. Another thing is I put on way too much thermal paste because, you know, my applicator is not perfect. And I just kind of glopped it on there. So, you know, temps aren't great on the CPU. That probably explains a little bit of it. You can definitely see the mounting pressure is quite high. Because of, you know, clamps can push a lot of force onto a CPU. But, rambling aside, thanks for watching. There might be an update in the future if I ever find time to do that. And subscribe for more crazy electronics videos like this in the future.